The basis for our sermon this afternoon is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord. They had watched over him his entire life. They remembered how when he was born, he fit snugly into their arms, the best gift God had given them. He was theirs, and he depended on them for everything. They remembered how as a little boy, he met the world with wide-eyed wonder as he experienced it for the first time. They remembered how he explored and got into everything. They also remembered how he grew from a little boy into a teen and the pain he had caused them with his many hateful and stubborn words. He desired his independence even though he was still only a child. But he loved them and they loved him and they remembered all of his good qualities as well. All the times when they thought to themselves, that's our son. All the times when he made them so proud. The road had been filled with many ups and downs. They had gone through so much along the way. And that's what made his leaving so hard to take. They had raised him for such a long time, yet so short a time. And now he had finally grown up. Now he was finally leaving and going off to college. This young man who stood before them. This young man who still had so much growing to do. This young man who would get lost along the way just like everyone else. This young man who needed to be reminded every day what they had taught him growing up. And so as they embraced him before he got into the car, they said to him, We love you. Remember who you are. Now we could say Paul is in a similar situation with the church in Corinth. He had raised them. He had taught them all about Christ and he had watched them grow in their lives as Christians. But then he eventually had to go away. He had to teach his word to other people. And so they were alone. And they still had a lot of growing to do. And so Paul had to remind them with his letter, remember who you are. He had to do this because in their spiritual immaturity, they were allowing some pretty bad things to go on in their congregation. One of the things that was happening is they had a member who was sleeping with his stepmother. And he wasn't at all ashamed about this. He was unrepentant and he had fallen from the faith. But not only this man was guilty, the entire congregation was guilty because they weren't doing anything about it. They were treating sin as if it wasn't really a big deal and they weren't trying to seek him, to save him. They weren't showing him his sins so that he might come to repentance. And so Paul, as their spiritual father, patiently reminds them through a picture from the Old Testament, remember who you are. He says to them, don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast. Now, although this picture might cause us to pause at first, it was a very powerful picture for the Corinthians, and one they would have understood very well. See, the Jews had two festivals in the first month of their religious new year. Two festivals, the Passover and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, this was a week-long celebration, and they had to get rid of all the old yeast from the previous year and then bake new loaves of bread without yeast, unleavened loaves, and eat those for that entire week. It was a time that was like their spring cleaning, except it had actual religious significance. It wasn't just a ritual. It, it was something that God was using to teach them something. He wanted them to remember every year that he had saved them from the oppressive hand of the Egyptians. He had saved them from slavery by his grace. He had been faithful to them throughout their existence as a people. He had handpicked them. He had chosen them to be his holy nation, the nation through whom the Savior would come. And as such, he wanted his people to live for him. He wanted them to rid their lives of sin. And that's the picture of yeast that he uses. He wants them to get rid of all of it. 
But then, the, the new loaves that they had to bake, the loaves without yeast, those were also meant to serve as a picture to him, to them as well. They were to see that they were to be new people, new batches, new loaves, people that said no to sin because of what he had done for them. And so with every sweep of the broom, with every swipe of the cloth, they remembered who they were to be. With every new loaf baked over the coals, they remembered who they were. And that's what Paul is trying to tell the Corinthians. Remember who you are to be. You're to be new batches without the yeast of sin. But right now, you're going against what God says. You're not concerned that your brother has fallen from the faith. You're not concerned about this sin that has sprung up in your midst. You're, you're not seeking to get rid of it. You don't see it as something that can damage your faith and separate you from your Savior. Remember that old feast, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember how after the sacrifice, things were to be different. You were to get under every pot, into every corner, and get rid of the yeast. Do the same in your lives. Get rid of sin. Sweep it out. Get your hearts clean. Remember who you are to be, but remember who you already are. See, Paul doesn't just tell them, do this, but he encourages them. He says, you are already clean. You are already holy through Christ, your Passover lamb. He says, be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Now the Passover was what Jesus and his disciples were celebrating on that first Maundy Thursday, but it went back thousands and thousands of years. The first Passover happened in Egypt before the Israelites had left. God told them four days before they left to take an innocent lamb into their houses and to raise it as their own. As they did so, as they raised it, as they gained affection for it, uh, eventually they were forced to see the terrible cost. For their deliverance. They then had to take that lamb, that innocent lamb, and slaughter it. And then they smeared its blood over the doorposts in their houses so that the plague of the firstborn would not touch their children, so that God's anger would pass over them. And God did pass over them for the sake of the blood of that lamb. And every year after that, the Israelites celebrated this by sacrificing cattle and sheep. And every year, God meant for those things to teach them yet again. He wanted them to realize every year that without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness. There could be no deliverance from sin. But he also wanted them to realize that the blood of sheep and cattle could not pay for sin. If it could, one sacrifice would be enough. Instead, every year, he was pointing the Israelites ahead to the final Passover lamb, the coming Messiah, who would make the sacrifice once for all. Once for all people, once for all sin. And so with every cow that was sacrificed, with every sheep that was slain, the Israelites remembered who they were. They were God's chosen people, dearly loved for the sake of the coming Messiah, the final Passover lamb. And that's who Paul is pointing the Corinthians to. He's saying, look at Christ. Remember who you are in Him. He is the final Passover lamb who was sacrificed for your sins. His blood trickled down the altar of the cross to forgive you of all your sins. He's gotten rid of the old yeast. He's made you new batches. You are perfect in His sight. So celebrate this every day. Remember who you are and get rid of that old yeast. Remember who you are. Is there something that still clings to the dirty corners of your heart? Is there some old yeast that still needs to be swept out? I'm sure there is, and there is for me too. Remember who you are to be. We're to be people who want nothing to do with sin. We're supposed to get it out of our lives. But all too often, we play with fire and we think we won't get burned. We don't see sin as the terrible thing it is. We don't think that it can possibly separate us from our Savior. We don't see the damage that it can do to our souls and the souls of others. We think that if there's a speck here or a small pile there, that that's okay, but this shouldn't be. Get rid of it. Sweep out your hearts. Make them clean. Remember who you are to be. But remember who you already are in Christ. Your Passover lamb who was sacrificed for you. 
In our lives as Christians, we don't have to reach a certain level of perfection, a certain level of sinlessness before we're declared perfect in God's sight. We already are through Christ. We are already new batches. We are already unleavened loaves, holy and saints before Him. And before we came to faith, when we couldn't be obedient, when we couldn't even love God at all, it didn't matter. Jesus wanted us anyway. He loved us all the more. He wasn't afraid to get His hands dirty to make us clean. And so He rolled up His sleeves and He went to work on our sin. He painted the, door, the, the posts of the cross crimson with his blood so that the anger of God passes over us. He takes our hearts and he freshly coats them with his blood, marking us as his children. Through his sacrifice, he takes the homes of our hearts and makes them spotless and clean. Homes fit for a king. Homes in which he now lives. Through his sacrifice, he has made us new batches, unleavened loaves, holy and perfect in his sight. And today, this Maundy Thursday, the Lamb who was slain but who is alive again offers you his body. He offers you his blood. He wants you to touch and to taste and to see the sacrifice that he had made for you as your Passover Lamb. He assures you through his body and blood that the burden of sin has been lifted from your shoulders, that you don't have to fear guilt and shame anymore. Through his body and blood, he assures you of who you are in him. So remember who you are. We are new batches, so let's live like it. Every morning that you wake up, thrust your old Adam underneath the powerful, cleansing, life-giving waters of baptism. Drown him. Don't let him take a breath. Resist the devil. Fight his temptations and he will flee from you. Sweep out of your hearts all bitterness and anger all jealousy and resentment. Wipe out all the cobwebs of slander and gossip. Scrub out all the stains of greed and lust. And remember all the while, as you seek to rid your life of sin, you are already clean. You are already holy. You are already new batches in Christ. Amen. Amen.